This video is sponsored by AeroPress. From the makers of the original niche killer, the DF-64, comes their first entry into the espresso machine market, the Turin Legato, a $500 single boiler espresso machine with a built-in PID for temperature control, shot timer, manual and automated brew settings, an easily adjustable flow output, a thermal block for quick milk steaming, and even, maybe, hidden flow control. On paper, this machine packs a punch in feature set for just 500 bucks. In fact, it's actually very similar to the Quick Mill Silvano with most of the same features for a nearly $1,300 price tag. But this machine, much like the original DF64, leaves some room for improvement. So in this video, I'm going to go over my thoughts on having used this machine over the last few weeks and whether or not it reigns as the new go-to option at the $500 or under category. This unit was sent to me for review by Espresso Outlet, although no money exchanged hands and I have no affiliate relationship with them for this machine, and all thoughts and opinions remain my own. And much like the DF line itself, the Tyrion name is just one of a few brands that the manufacturer markets the machine under, depending on your region. In fact, this machine has already been sold in other countries and under different names and brands for a few years now. So starting off with the build quality, I immediately felt like this had taken a few steps back from the current line of DF grinders. While there was a huge quality improvement seen from the DF64 Gen 1 to the Gen 2, I was hoping to see this same level of quality translated into this machine. However, that was not the case. The Turin Legato is made up primarily of bent steel parts all around. The seams and joints are fairly visible, and it's certainly nothing to be wowed by. The drip tray is primarily plastic with a steel frame to more or less obscure the plastic tray from view. The metal lid on top is also quite thin with some sharp edges that could use a little refinement. The general build seems to lack tighter tolerances, and you can feel edges where one side is a little bit more pronounced than the other. I would have liked to see the more premium finish used on something like the DF64 Gen 2 carried over onto this machine, although it is understandable that to achieve this low price point, some corners had to be cut, or in this case, bent. The back of the machine features a fairly large water reservoir, which is easy to see and refill, unlike something like the Gadget Classic Pro's reservoir, which is sort of hidden underneath the group head. The machine does use a standard 58mm portafilter, which is great to see, unlike the proprietary one found on the Gadget Classic, and I can confirm that it works just fine with my Posado portafilter that I use on my Linnea Mini. This also means that I can use my nice 58mm IMS baskets, puck screens, tools, and tamper. The machine's front face has three buttons, a PID interface, and a steam knob. This is where the little details irk me a little, but the icons and said buttons are not pointing completely straight up as they should, and the icon on the steam knob also isn't pointing parallel in any resting or using position. The buttons on the PID interface are fairly difficult to locate and don't quite align with the plus and minus icons themselves. I found that they need some serious pressing for them to actuate correctly, but the screen itself is bright and clear, and it's super easy to see your brewing temp, shot timer, and control things like pre-infusion time and set your automated brew mode. You can also see a pressure gauge under the front panel and you have access to this exposed screw which will control the flow output from the machine. There is also a light under the group area which stays lit as long as the machine is on, which I actually like. On the portafilter handle, they've cleverly integrated this vertical line design around the portafilter, which sort of helps the actual plastic seam blend in. The metal end cap is also a nice touch for making it feel just a little bit more premium. The machine did also come with some accessories that, honestly, probably shouldn't see the light of day. They're a little weird, bulky, awkward to use, and honestly should just not be used. So while there's not a ton to love about the quality of the machine, it's hard to fault it too much for being just 500 bucks and packing in a decent amount of tech. That I do hope that the manufacturer takes the route of the DF line of grinders and improves on some of these smaller traits over time with a Gen 2 revision. But you know what doesn't need a Gen 2 revision? The AeroPress, a brewer that's been around for so long that there are competitions dedicated to this little device. Versatile, travel-friendly, compact, indestructible, eye-catching, there are so many different ways to describe this coffee brewer, and best of all, it actually makes great coffee. With endless recipes online from world champions to your average home barista, you can experiment to find your ultimate personal brewing recipe. So treat yourself to the perfect gift and use code CHRIS15 to get an exclusive 15% off at AeroPress. Once again, thanks to AeroPress for sponsoring this video. When it comes to pulling shots, I was instantly reminded of what it was like when I first started out with the Gadget Classic Pro about four years ago now, minus the headache of temperature surfing. To actually brew, you can either go full manual and press the button to start the water flow and again to stop it, pretty straightforward, or you can hit the automatic mode which will dispense water for a set period of time that is adjustable by holding down the button initially. 
You can also set a pre-infusion time. However, all it's doing is essentially dispensing water for like a second and then spending the rest of that set time as a waiting period before starting the brew again. I would suggest that if you want to do that, just use the manual button so you can control how long the pre-infusion lasts for with the caveat of losing the shot timer functionality. During the brew, the machine does tend to aim for a 9 bar shot, sometimes ramping up to 10 to 11 bars at the start, before reducing to a more standard 9 bars. And shots have been good here, really nothing to complain about. It pulls a standard traditional style shot just fine as long as you WDT and prepare your puck properly, you won't have too many complaints. And the lack of temperature surfing is a huge plus, and I found that it was very consistent back to back. But one thing I am very particularly interested in is this. You can adjust the flow rate with this little exposed screw. So that got me thinking, is this essentially a flow controller? So I have a large flathead bit in place that I can then twist as it brews to control the flow rate. And doing this has allowed me to unlock some degree of flow profiling capability. I did find that the range is fairly limited. You essentially have about a rotation and a half to work with, and you have to be extra precise with a bit, which isn't the easiest to do in this position, but I was able to successfully pull a shot, watching it ramp up to nine bars, then quickly ramp it down to six bars and hold it there with this method. And the resulting shots were more akin to a profile that I enjoy a lot with a lower pressure. Shots were a little bit sweeter, more distinct flavor notes were pulled through, and a lot less astringency than what I was getting with a straight nine bar shot, at least with the same beans. So, does this machine have flow control? Kind of. I think there's definitely some room to experiment here with 3D printing some kind of knob or other device that maybe protrudes from the side to better adjust the screw. Although, I'll also mention that the screw itself is hot to the touch and should be a consideration. In my own testing, I hadn't noticed the screw to mess with the OPV and water would still come out into the drip tray just fine, which is great, but as always, do exercise caution if you want to test this. I also was able to confirm with Joe at Espresso Outlet that this can be sort of used as a pseudo flow control. Steam power here is acceptable. There is an advertised capability of brewing and steaming at the same time, but I found that this wasn't really able to work because whenever the brewer or the steam power was engaged, the other function simply wouldn't. Steam is controlled with this knob here, and you basically just want to immediately open it up all the way, purge out a bit of water before getting to the drier steam, and then switch it off, position your milk pitcher, and then start to steam. And for me, it took about 30 seconds for a smaller pitcher, and I found that you can get some silky milk just fine with some practice. One other thing to note is that the steam wand itself is a little stiff, at least on my unit, but nothing maybe some grease or maybe loosening up a screw here or there wouldn't fix. Like many smaller machines, clearance for large pitchers will be a challenge, but with the relatively weak steam power, I probably wouldn't go for a massive amount of milk anyway. So overall, I have to say that for $500, it's a solid entry-level machine with some quirks that I'm hoping can be improved on in a Gen 2 model. In this price range, you're comparing it to machines like the Gaggia Classic, the Breville Bambino, or Bambino Plus, and from my experience, this is a strong competitor. With more capabilities than the Gaggia for the same price, this new Turin Legato has come out on top. Between this and the Bambino, I will say that the Bambino still packs a punch for its size and price, with the insanely quick heat up time and stronger steam power, albeit less control over the brewing aspects compared to the Legato. And I can't end this review without quickly mentioning the CAF Messina 1 which appears to be what is essentially the Gaggiuino mod to the Gaggia Classic Pro, but done for this exact machine housing. And this takes the same espresso machine, or at least the same housing, adds flow, pressure, and temperature profiling with both gravimetric and volumetric control. So with the introduction of this machine in the US market, I am excited to see if the Gaggiuino community or similar will be able to open up modding capabilities for it. And so those are my thoughts on the new Turin Legato Espresso Machine, a solid option at the $500 and below price point. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.